Welcome to another edition of Mark's Madness, joined as always by Mark Miller. I'm Matt Finkel. Mark, two facts for you. Uh -huh. If you're playing in mid-November, you've had a good season. <laughs> yes. And we've got 15 area teams left. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, it's great. You know, it keeps getting more fun. It gets fun for less teams, but we still have 15, so we got a bunch of them to talk about. We do. We do have a lot. We had 25 last week, and we had some matchups between area yeah. teams, so we knew we were going to lose some. Yeah. But let's start with one. The biggest story of the football season so far, in my opinion, Lima Sr. Mm -hmm. getting to the yeah. postseason, having such an amazing run. They did not play an area team uh -huh. in Harrison, and they led 26 yeah. to nothing, then yeah. 30, 29 nothing rather, yes. then 36 yeah. to 7, and Harrison ended up winning on the final play of the game. Yeah, you know, you hate for it to end that way. And you know, those guys are going to look at it just for a short while, but they're going to look at it as we were 8 0 and then 0 and 3. You know, but they played two really good track teams at the end of the year. So those losses, even though very disappointing, you know, not, I mean, a lot of teams lost to those, and a lot of teams will still lose to them in tournament. And then the Harrison game, I think they proved to themselves that they were able to win, they were ready to win that game, but momentum flipped right before half, and they just could not stop that snowball coming down the hill, you know? Right. But what a great season Mike Fell and those guys had. And, and, you know, it'll hurt for a little while, but as they get on into the winter here, they're going to look back and be really proud of what they accomplished this season. Without a doubt. It stings a little right now, yeah. especially given the promise that we had going into Week 9. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it was still such a great season yeah. for those guys, and a lot of them are coming back. So That's right. We, That's we right. could be right here again a year from now having this conversation, talking about Week 12 matches. That's for right. Mike Fell has got it rolling. Home game, the crowd, the city, the area responded. It was a great crowd, a lot of energy down there. And now we'll build on that for next year. A lot of good young players, you're right. Yep. Wapakoneta, meanwhile, as we move to Division Three, mm -hmm. they defeated Oxford Tawanda yep. pretty easily. No problems for Travis Moore. He's now won, you know, as many games. <laughs> who knows? Who even knows? He doesn't know. Who knows how many games he's won? Yeah. Bell Fountain, the two seed, loses in that uh -huh. region, and now Wapak gears up for Tippy Canoe yeah. in Sydney on yep. Friday night. Yeah, and they had a very comfortable win over Springfield Kenton Ridge. But you know, this was a, a tough first round test for Wapak. That score, 49-14, sounds like they were killing them the whole way. But that Maurice Thomas, a kid that signed with the Redskins, that hurts me as a Falcon to say that, <laughs> uh, 219 yards and two touchdowns. He's a man. Oh, yeah. And uh, they were able to you know, win comfortably, giving him yardage, but not letting him take over the game. So that's a great win for Wapak. I could be wrong on this, but I believe he scored the first rushing touchdown against Wapakoneta. You might be right. They haven't had many. They're only yeah. giving up 5.9 points a game, right. so there aren't very many people scored on them, period. Right. And let alone you know, a rushing touchdown. You're probably right. So let's move to Division 4 now, Region 12. Kenton. Kenton defeated Port Clinton 49-14. They've now won nine in a row. How about this? Colin Stoller, five touchdowns. Yeah, and Trent Heights threw six of them, five to Colin. 524 yards passing. Uh, he had another one rushing. 560 total yards. This was not a game. You know, this was a blowout from the very beginning. And uh, Kenton is, uh, you know, when, when teams from outside the area see that offense, they're like, wow. You know, what do we do now? You know, at least around here, you expect it. Right. But uh, and they're rolling, and they got Worcester Triway. That's from over north near my stomping grounds, and, and uh, they play a lot better competition in the WBL and, and with cold water as their opener than what Triway will have played. So hopefully, Kenton will do to Triway what they did to him in 2013, and that is beat them soundly, 46-6 on 2013. Well, that game will be played at Ashland. It's a game you can see on WOSN. We're going to get to our broadcast schedule later on, though. Let's move on to Division 5, and we had two area teams that yep. won easily. Liberty yeah. Benton shut out Delta, mm -hmm. cold water. I got highlights of that game, and I arrived in the second quarter. The score was 36 to nothing. <laughs> I got a touchdown. I got yeah. 42 to nothing, yeah. and then, you know, they didn't have to do much else from there. They won yeah. 50 to 9. A shutout for Liberty Benton tells you how good that defense is, and they're very good now. They play Marion Pleasant. That's a playoff-tested team at ONU. It'll be a great setting, and that'll be a really good game. But Coldwater, you're right. I mean, Brody Hoying's back, you know, three touchdowns passing, one running, and uh, they had the subs in at the end of the first half. You know, this game ended 50-9. to nine. It probably could have been 150-9 to nine if Chip would have wanted to run it up, but he doesn't do that stuff. So, yeah, they, they are a far better team than Chippewa. And uh, even though Huron's 10-1 and one playing at – here on or at Tiffin, you know, I, I think Coldwater's a lot better than them too. Well, they defeated them last year pretty easily. I think it was a regional semi, or regional final, I should say. I think the score was 60 to 13. That's right. Yeah, so, that, yeah that's they, a little differential. Right. Yeah. So I don't know if Huron's any better this year. Yeah, they might be. But you know, Coldwater's still got to keep playing. You know, and, and take care of business. They've been there before. This is nothing new for them. So Coldwater and Liberty Belton could be on track yeah. for a regional final. Yeah. That could be really interesting. It could. That could be good. 
All right, Division 6 now. This is where we, we had our loaded region. We'll start in mm -hmm. Region 20, seven local teams in the area. And let's start with the 4-5. Spencerville yeah. avenges its Week 8 loss to Crestview mm -hmm. with a big win at yeah. Convoy. Yeah, they did. Uh, they did it uh, like they like to do it, you know, with the run game. And, and Zach Gokey, 150 yards, 151 rushing. And, and uh, you know, the key to this game was they stopped Preston Zaleski. Stopped him. He still had 126 yards rushing, yeah. but that's stopping him for him, right. for, for that kid. And they got four turnovers, two fumbles, two interceptions. It's tough to beat a good team when you have four turnovers. So I can see why Crestview loses this game. But a good sound victory for Spencerville now into round two. Let's talk about the job John Zerby did because, mm -hmm. first of all, that is the first ever victory, yep. playoff victory for the Spencerville football program. And then remember they just lost to Jefferson. They were mm -hmm. kind of reeling a little bit mm -hmm. headed into the postseason. And then he gets them up, and they play a really complete football game in week 11. Yeah, they lose two of their last three also, you know, because Crestview was week eight, I eight. guess it was, That's over right. there. And, and so, you know, similar to Lima Senior, what they faced, you know, the backloaded uh, schedule, but they popped out of that thing in, in uh, tournament and got the big win. So, yeah, John's done a great job. You know, he, he took a program that was more bound, can we say that? Uh -huh. uh, and they are really good right now. And, and they're young, too. They got a lot of good young they're players. They're very young. Goki's yeah. just a junior. Yeah. Speaking of first playoff wins, Van Buren, mm -hmm. this was their first ever yeah. appearance, but they, they didn't wait, yeah. waste any time. They yeah. defeated LCC yeah. at ONU mm -hmm. in a high-scoring affair, 49-39 yeah. yeah. the final. Mark Schein and I called that game, and I, I will tell you, uh, I hadn't seen Van Buren yet. Uh, they're good. They're very good. They're good. The BVC must be really strong. Yes. You know? um, Ross Adolph, he, he got second-team BVC. I want to see if three guys that beat him out. Right. And I know a couple of them are really yeah, good. But this Combs kid is and Reddick special. Up there. Oh, yeah. my goodness. 194 yards rushing. He had four touchdowns. And he threw one. Yep. You know, I mean, and, and he plays defense. We were calling his name all the time on defense. He's not their only player. But this team came in very aggressively. They took it to LCC. LCC has so much talent. They were able to, able to come back, make some big plays, and, and make the score a little closer than what it really was. Uh, because right before half, I thought it was over. You know, it was 42 30, you know, after three quarters. But. LCC fought back, but that Van Buren team's pretty good. They got Winford. Winford, you know, always wins a lot, but not a lot in tournament. Maybe he can get by Winford. Ross Adolph, just back to him for a second. The four touchdowns, and you said you mentioned he threw one. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's a, a baseball player. I think that's his best sport, so just an athlete. This he kid. is an athlete, yeah. and, you know, Dan Allison and I were, I, I, I think I said Mark Shine. Dan Allison and I did the game, and we were talking about uh, there are some colleges that were sitting there at Ohio Northern right. Stadium and saying, Boy, wouldn't Ohio Northern like that kid to play on their oh, team next for year. Sure, you know? for sure. Yeah. So then in the 1-8 matchup in that region, Tenora defeats Wayne Trace, mm -hmm. and they'll move on. And then Delphus Jefferson, as you mentioned, they came up short against Winford. Yeah. So Van Buren, Winford at Tiffin, Spencerville, Tenora at Spartan Stadium. Mm -hmm. Who do you like out of this region? Well, <laughs> I, you know, Tenora is really strong, and they've been down the road before and have had good success. But, uh, you know, you get an upstart like Van Buren, and they're just riding the crest right now. It was really cool because at the end of the game, all their fans come on the field, and the coach talked to the whole community. He had the players on the inside on their knee, the fans and, and cheerleaders, and everybody great. standing around the outside, and, and they'd give a big cheer, and he'd say something else. It, it was really cool. That's small school football, and you got to love it. Love to see that. Yeah. That is very yeah. cool. Now let's, let's move to Division VI, Region 22. Mm -hmm. And Minster defeated Mechanicsburg in the game of the week. <laughs> yeah. And before, before we talk about this game, let's just show you how it ended. And we'll break down this play for a couple of plays for you here. As starting with Minster's final possession of the game, leading or trailing by seven, just 30 seconds left. Okay. So they got a score. And here you see Josh Nixon going back. He's going to throw it to the big guy, Eli Wolf. Now, Eli's a huge guy, went up and over. But he was beyond those guys. And I think it was just a fly pattern, a little bit off camera. But Nixon got good protection. You're going to see it again here. The lineman, man on man up there. The back is up in there. Doesn't even have to block anybody. And Josh throws it up high. And that's what you have to do. Right there's Eli up and over. Only him with the ball. He comes down. And then the PAT ties it up and sends it into overtime. So amazing play with very little time left to get yeah. it to OT. Now, in overtime, first possession for Minster. Mechanicsburg already scored. Well, they go the other way. Now they're on the jailbreak screen. Everybody blocking downfield, and this is Bryce Schmeezing. Again, Josh Nixon throws it to him behind the line of scrimmage. You know, uh, look at the defense. They're reading linemen. They don't see that wide receiver coming down inside. They're all running out. They think it's a screen pass. They all took off to the right. He's got the ball coming back to the left. 
Nobody really touches him all the way. Guys are working for him downfield, and there he is into the end zone. So that ties it at 35. We go to double overtime. Both teams score. Minster went to Eli Wolf in the end zone again, and now here is Mechanicsburg trying to win it, going for two. You got to stop him. It's do or die. You go home or go on. And right there, you see number two, Jacob Dews, and number 11, Jared Toby coming over the top. Eli Wolf was in the vicinity, and they stop him just, and I mean just, short of the line. Yeah, take another look at this play. If we had official review in high school football, we, we would, <laughs> Kyle Pullman did a great job on camera here to show you that his elbow is going to come down at about the one inch line. Yeah. If well, the referee's exists. right on it. You can see the referee right there staring at the goal line, and he saw it. He was down just before now. He ends up laying in the end zone. That's because you kind of bounce and fall in there. But that's their guy. You knew he was going to carry it. He did, he did everything for him, that quarterback. So, well, Minster, good win. A huge win in, in overtime and very exciting. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, Versailles, 34-27 over Miami East. Now they'll match up in a MAC rematch in a regional semifinal. Yeah, I mean, how many times do you see that? You know, the MAC playing each other in the first round, now the second round because they keep beating non-area teams. So this will be a good one. They certainly know each other, no doubt about that. Um, so we'll have to see what happens, but it'll be a fun game. Speaking of beating non-area teams, MAC 56-2 and two now in regional <laughs> quarterfinals. Uh, against non-MAC teams. Yeah, and we did good. lose one this week, too. That was, we'll get to that in a minute, yep. St. John's against Arlington. Yep. But uh, Minster won the regular season matchup against Versailles, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see who comes out. But yeah, it was pretty far back, I think week five, week five. And so I don't know how much carryover that has, but uh, you know these are two good teams, and they'll go at each other, no doubt. And the key in a lot of those kind of games, again, we come to turnovers and big plays. You right. Know? That's always what it comes That's down to. Comes so down that'll to. be at Piqua yeah. on Friday. Now Division 7, Region 24. This was our BBC heavy region. <laughs> yeah. And Arlington gets past Delta St. John's. There's yeah. an example that uh, something that doesn't happen very often. Right. A MAC team losing to a non-MAC opponent in the first round. Especially of, those two teams. You right. Delphus has had their way with Arlington, but not this time. Right. So Arlington advances. Macomb beats Toledo Christian. Mm -hmm. And now a 1-4 hits Arlington against Macomb in a BBC matchup Saturday at 7 at Donnell Stadium. Yeah. Going to be fun. Rematch late in the year. I think it was week 9 that yeah. those two teams played, right? And uh, Arlington right. got them, but 38-7 um, they got gee, them. The that's Red just Devils. a couple weeks ago, and, and uh, Macomb's got revenge on their mind. But you know, Austin Reddick, 213 yards rushing for Arlington. They they gave Delphus Jeff or St. John's only 150 total yards. So that was a dominant victory for Arlington. They're very good. Macomb obviously is very good down through the years. BBC matchup round two. That'll be fun. Those running backs in the BBC or something else. Yeah, they must be man. Yeah. You got a great one making second team. Those first teamers are really special. All right, Lipsick falls to Calvert, mm -hmm. and then Grove defeats PG 21-6 in this region. Grove is they're on a roll. They started 3-0, yeah. yeah. then they lost four straight, and now Rough they've middle. won yeah. four in a row again, including that playoff game. So mm -hmm. Grove will match up yeah. with Calvert. And, and they beat PG in a rematch, you know, five interceptions, that helps, you know. That's, how, that's that turnover story again. But they win comfortably and get to go to round two, and so, you know, Coach Schaefer's got them rolling up in Grove too. Good for them. And Lipsick had a nice season as well. It did come did. to an end in week yep. 11, but Andy Mangus, great yeah. job in his first year as head coach. Right. And they're always they're yeah, always you around, look at it and you, know? you finish five and six, but hey, you got in a postseason, you can't say that about many teams. Right. So let's finish with D Division 7, Region 26. Mm -hmm. Fort Recovery takes down mm -hmm. Fort Lormy. Mm -hmm. First ever playoff win yeah. for the Indians. Yeah. And on the same day that the Army Redskins won the state volleyball <laughs> yeah. tournament, there a lot of the players Isn't went down something? to watch. Yeah. Army got off to a great start in this game, but then yes, Fort Recovery and Cole Hull kind of controlled the clock, and he did his yeah. thing, and the Indians got the win. It, it, we re, Mark Shine, this is the game Mark Shine and I did. We really enjoyed our visit to Fort Lormie. They took care of us. They showed us their beautiful facility, all raised with private dollars over a million dollars. It's a very nice wow. facility. The girls were up in a press box. We introduced them one by one. It was a great night other than the final result because Fort Recovery came in and they are really good. I mean, they're Mac tested. They had a good night. I worried about them because they faltered late in the season, but they were able to snap back and count it the second season. Uh, the coach did a great job getting them ready. And so now they face another Mac team. Got another Marrying Mac rematch local. in yeah. Marion Local. Marion yeah. Local rolled over Triad. They started slow, it was yeah. 6 nothing at the end of one, mm -hmm. but they found a way to, to do what they always do and win yeah. 40 to nothing, yeah. the final. So now Marion Local will take on Fort Recovery mm -hmm. Saturday at Wapak. Do the Indians have a chance? Yeah, I think they always have a chance, you know, because uh, Marion Local can't put the ball on the ground. They can't hold and clip all the time and back your, your offense up. 
who knows what the weather is going to be and how the kids will respond to that. I think you always have a chance, but on paper, everybody's going to favor Marion Local. And the teams in the MAC really respect Marion Local. They got the offensive player of the year in J.C. Guttemiller. They got the defensive player of the year in Jacob Kunkler, and they got the coach of the year in Tim Goodwin. So the other teams that are voting said, yeah, you guys are the best. They are. They definitely are, and they'll be that way until they're knocked off. That's right. And yeah. as defending champs, three-time defending champs, mm -hmm. they're uh, looking for their fourth, and Fort Recovery now stands in the way, and mm -hmm. at least they're familiar with their opponent. They are familiar, and they know that they're tough, and they're not going to give in. You know, I think some of these other teams that come in and play, some of those MAC teams like Coldwater and Marion Local, they get demoralized early and throw in the towel, yeah. and that's when you get 50 to nothing and your subs in the, the whole second half. That won't happen in this game. Fort Recovery knows what to expect, and they'll be ready for it. Finishing out in this region, Layman Catholic defeated Covington 42-7. to So now the Cavs will face Troy Christian in the regional mm -hmm. semis on Saturday. Yeah. So we've got a lot to look forward to. We've mentioned the 15 area teams, and we've got eight regional semifinal matchups for you to watch on the West Ohio Sports Network. So let's run through the broadcast schedule. Mark, you call out where you're going to be if you know right. already. Okay. Saturday at 10 a.m., Gets it started with Tenora versus Spencerville on WOSN, and then also at 10 a.m. on WTLW versus Sales Minster. Mm -hmm. Saturday, doubleheader continues, 7 p.m. We'll have a nighttime doubleheader for you as well. Tippi, Tippi Canoe, Wapakoneta on WOSN, followed by Kenton Triway at 9. Then we jump ahead to Sunday. We've got Arlington Macomb at 9 a.m., and if you miss it at 9 a.m., catch it again at noon on WOSN. Sunday at 3, Marion Local versus Fort Recovery, that Big Mac rematch. And then a doubleheader Sunday at 7 starts with Grove versus Calvert and then finishes with Coldwater Huron at 9. That's all on WOSN. So our only game on, WTL good the only game on WTLW this week is for Sales Minster. The rest can be found on the West Ohio Sports Network. And that's a lot. It's a lot of football. That's right. It's going to be is. a lot of fun. It, it sure will. You know where you'll be? Uh, I'm going to be in Pickle on Friday night and Wapak on Saturday. All right. So we'll look out for Mark Miller on the call. And Hope you enjoy the playoff football as it continues on to week 12. That's going to do it for this edition of Mark's Madness. Thanks for joining us as always. We'll see you next time on WOSN.